As church attendance continues to decline, ministries are beginning to confront a glaring problem with how we do church. That problem is that our buildings are extremely expensive and they only get used once or twice per week and they're often removed from the everyday life of our communities. Thankfully, there are churches working to solve this problem in innovative ways and by the end of this video, you'll learn the new rules for church buildings and how your church can begin to apply these principles right away, whether your church is big, small, young, or old. Well, hey there, and welcome to Pro Church Tools, the show to help you share the message of Jesus while we try and navigate the biggest communication shift in 500 years. I'm your host, Alex Mills, joined as always by Brady Shearer. Alex, one of the core foundational statements of our company is seize the 167, mm -hmm. which is short form for seize the 167 hours beyond your Sunday sure. service. And of course, the idea behind that is that we now have the means to reach people in our community and in our congregation, not just in our one hour mm -hmm. Sunday services, but through platforms like social media, through a podcast like this, through a YouTube video on a YouTube channel yep. like this one. And that extends to our church buildings as well. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to take this episode of Pro Church Tools to talk about something we've never really discussed before, and that is the physical spaces that our churches meet in. You know, one of the most... No, it is now the most popular video on this YouTube channel. It's a video about stage design. Yeah. And it's the only video I think we have pretty much on stage design. And I made that video begrudgingly because <laughs> I think stage design in a lot of ways is a hollow effort. We think that if we just make our stage prettier, right. it's going to attract. We're going to be so much more relevant. Like the amount the of youths are going to come. The 25 year old families. The biggest droves you've ever seen. If you want to reach millennials, <laughs> you need so much haze. Yeah. So much haze. It's going to instantly reach young people. I mean, how would you see the lights if you didn't have the haze? Thank right? you, Lord. So it's, it's both and. How are you going to see the light of the world oh, without the light on this stage? Thank you, Jesus. And we could end the episode right there because <laughs> <laughs> there's this church in Alabama, uh, a town called Pike Road, Alabama, mm -hmm. which is a newly incorporated town, incorporated in 1997, it's in Montgomery County in Alabama. And there's this church there called Century Church. You can go to their website, century.church. A great domain, by the way. Great <laughs> domain. And a great church. I think they go yeah. by the moniker of just Century. Yeah. And they've been meeting for a couple of years. They're, they're a church plant. They're about 500 people now. They're led by their lead pastor, Dr. Patrick M. Quinn. And they're at the point where they're ready to build their own space. They're mm -hmm. meeting in an elementary school, Pike Road School. And they're, or is that it? Pike Road School? Something like that. Pike Road School. Yeah. They're meeting in this, uh, in this school. And if you go to their Facebook page, they've got about 500 likes. They mm -hmm. look like pretty much every cool, upbeat church sure. plant. They meet in this school, and so they put up some cool lights yep. and their stage design. And they've got their projector, and they're doing their worship. No wonder the youths are coming. So many youths. <laughs> You know, the longer form episode, uh, format of these shows is just it's making not good it. for us. Uh, people Century say like, Church, <laughs> so many youths. So many youths. And they're at that place that so many church plants are. Yeah. We're about 500 people. We're going to build our own space. Mm -hmm. We don't need to be renting this school, renting this theater, meeting in a space that isn't our own. We're going to build our own building. Yeah. But they're doing something at this state that almost no other church plant, no other church really that I know of, very few anyway, is doing. And what they're doing is pushing the boundaries of what church buildings have been for the last quarter century or so. Mm -hmm. And they're ready to build their own building. But, and I quote now, they've set out to create a church campus that will abandon, and I love that word, abandon the 20th century church design formula in favor of directly addressing some of the factors that are contributing to decreases in church participation. Mm -hmm. And we should talk about those problems yeah. right now. This comes from churchleaders.com, if present trends continue, the percentage of the population that attends church in 2050 is estimated in America to be uh, almost half of what 1990s attendance were, a drop wow. from 20.4% to 11.7%. So we're talking about a 50-year change, mm -hmm. cutting attendance in half, wow. which is a crazy shift to see in that short amount of time. And what is the cause for this? It's you, Alex. <laughs> yes. It's the you. <laughs> yes, it because is. Because... Only two in 10 people in the U.S. under the age of 30 consider attending church, quote unquote, un important. That's an all-time low. And that's a stat from Barna from 2013. Yeah. So that means that was six years ago, two in 10 people under the age of 36, yeah. which is a lot more alarming than people under 30. It's like mm -hmm. kids in their 20s. Right. They don't want to yeah, attend what church. What do they know? Yeah. But 36 and under. We're talking about like 
that's every young family. Yeah. And that's a scary data point. Yeah, and we've seen this data for the last handful of years. I remember in the mid to late 2000s when we started, you know, we make jokes about the haze and the lights, but it was, um, you know, we were compensating with those stage designs for what we saw as a lack in church attendance. We thought yeah. church isn't relevant anymore. You know, these kids, uh, these droves of youths will go out in the thousands to see these concerts with lights and haze. Well, maybe we should start incorporating the stuff into the church to become more relevant. I mean, how many articles did we see in, in the last five, six, seven, in eight relevant years magazine. in relevant magazine of, you know, is the church relevant enough? How to make your church more relevant to, to kind of curb these stats where we saw people, you know, and this maybe isn't a critique on the faith as much. It's just people aren't attending your physical building as much as they used, used to. And if we see these trends continue, like you said, that number from the 90s in about 50 years is going to get cut in half. So what are we going to do? And there's a fine, fine line of distinction here mm -hmm. between what we do at Pro Church Tools and what we're critiquing here, which was the aim at all costs to be relevant. Yeah. If you don't spend your time doing what we do full time, you might think, Brady, stage design is right up your alley. Right. Like, that's exactly what you do. You're just playing yourself. Mm -hmm. You're exposing yourself. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> by talking about that. And this was actually something that I struggled with. About two years ago, we had just gotten this space here, mm -hmm. Pro Church Tools, our, our new headquarters, and I was really struggling with what we were doing and it coming in really confrontation with my theological views that mm -hmm. we're kind of hitting on here with what church was supposed to be. I was like, what are we doing here? Like, oh, a nice, cool stage design yeah. or, you know, a cooler pro presenter font. You know, oh, better fonts for the church. We had so many font articles. So many font articles. It's like, what are you even doing here? <laughs> and that was what birthed this whole idea, to use a church word, of seize the 167 hours mm -hmm. beyond your Sunday service. Yeah, because it. that was the difference between a, a, a better looking design, which I care about, but, you know, fundamentally isn't that big of a deal, mm -hmm. and recognizing the shift in attention. Yes. And that was where the idea, that's something I say all the time, the biggest commodity, the most important commodity your church can possess is attention. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about haze. It wasn't about better fonts. Right. It wasn't about a church app. It was about where attention was being paid mm -hmm. and how the biggest communication shift in 500 years was shifting attention and how that was commoditizing what we were doing in church yeah. and how that was creating these huge problems. And that's what I love about what Century's doing. And we're going to do a deep dive into their plan to build this really cool campus. And I'm going to talk about what my own church is doing that is very similar. Yeah. Much of what we're discussing here is coming from an article in a, a publication called CNU, which stands for the Congress for New Urbanism. It was written by a guy named Nathan Norris. And so we're going to link that article in the show notes and the description for this video and podcast. So if you want to read through the entire article, we're going to be showing the images for mm -hmm. the architectural plans for this new church. If you want to see those directly, you can also, go to the article linked in the show notes if yeah. you are listening. So to quote the pastor of Century Church, he said, The 20th century model for building churches focuses on the church buildings, whereas we believe that the future of the church is to focus on how to build the community first. And, mm -hmm. and Pastor Quinn noted that throughout the centuries, you know, the church has always been at its healthiest when it's outward focus instead of inward focus. Imagine that. And we talk about this all the time <laughs> yeah. with what you're trying to do on social, mm -hmm. what you're trying to do with your new visitor follow-up. Be outwardly focused. Now, inward focus, and mm -hmm. we've done, we've seen this with so many church buildings. It's like, okay, our church is too big now. Where are we going to build? Well, we're going right. to go to some suburb on the outskirts of the city. We're going to build this monstrous church, and then everyone's going to come to our giant mega mall of a church. Mm -hmm. And then what's going to happen? Well, we'll meet once or twice a week. Maybe we'll have seven services between Saturday and yeah. Sunday. And then I don't know if you've ever done this, but I remember going to church buildings during the week. And the pastor was never there. Sometimes right. it was always lunch. He's on lunch. Yeah. It's like 10 a.m. <laughs> and Martha's there. Right. He's, on, he's on lunch. She's I, I don't know what to tell you. She's the administrative assistant. And she's been folding bulletins for 10 hours. <laughs> and I, and, I mean, and it's a ghost town. It's just Martha, nobody else. And like, the name of it, my administrative assistant was Vita. Okay. And Vita was always folding bulletins. Uh -huh. And she was always angry at me. <laughs> Brady the intern. Yeah, makes sense. And... I was like, man, we got this huge building. We had just done an expansion when I was in youth. Yeah. And you know, I think it cost like 300000 which for a smaller church was a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, Now building projects, like our church is doing one, it's like $10 million or something. Yeah. 
And it was so weird because we got this huge space and no one is there throughout the week mm. except us interns because we got to get our co-op hours to get our degree. Yeah. No, to get our credits. Right. To go to school to get a degree. <laughs> right. And that's one of the huge problems with churches that we've yeah. got these huge facilities and they're not being used. So instead of creating a large church building that's surrounded by a sea of parking and it's only used once or twice a week, what mm-hmm. Century wants to do is create a campus that's vibrant throughout the week. And its main goal is to solve these two problems, okay. to be a solution. Number one. Buildings that cater to the entire community, Hmm. not just the congregation. And then number two, designing a campus that's so welcoming and comfortable that people will simply want to hang out there. Hmm. I live with my wife and her (laughs) brother, (laughs) Ryland. Right. Ryland works at Pro Church Tools. Yes. We have a very nice house. Mm -hmm. Just moved in there. The amount of time that Brittany and Ryland, my wife and her brother, want to go to Starbucks to journal. To hang, (laughs) to just sit. Because Starbucks, and their entire model has been built upon this, not built on good coffee, (laughs) Ayo, has been built upon these amazing meeting spaces. No matter where you are in the world. Got that reclaimed wood. We got those Edison balls. Free work for Yeah, Now sucks, but used to be cool. (laughs) And it's like, we can sit here and spend as much time as we want. Edison bulb. Nice. Natural light. Ooh, exposed beams. Yes. Nice. And I felt like there was a joke there about exposed (laughs) beans. And how, like, their coffee is not great anymore, third wave. But we're exposing them. I couldn't get there. Anyway, that's what Century Church is aiming to do with their space. What most churches offer, in my mind, has become commoditized. The way that we do church is all about sitting and listening. Mm -hmm. We're going to listen to some music. We're going to listen to a person talk. It's almost always a man. And that's become commoditized because I can listen to any podcast, anytime, and it's going to be a lot better materially yeah. than, the, than the sermon I can hear on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. And I can now listen to the best worship music, sure. stream it for free. And there's always a new album coming out every yeah. week. I don't need to hear Lisa from your church try and sing Oceans. I'm just going to let Taya handle that. I'm going to listen to it. My own headphones, my own sound system, where I want, Look, when I want. <laughs> I've heard you try to do Ain't No Grave. Yeah, just stop. Put me in the grave, because it's that bad. <laughs> like, you can't pull it up. Yeah. Stop trying to pull it up. Like, whoa, country worship song. We got so much grunge. Yeah, no. I've been waiting so long for it's, this. It's bad. <laughs> and I like it, because I'm there in person, and I know sure. the worship leader, go yeah. Lisa. Yeah. But those types of things have become commoditized. Yeah. But there are things about the church that cannot be commoditized, mm-hmm. namely community. Yeah, that's You it. can't replace real, authentic community between brother, sister in Christ, with a phone, Mm -hmm. and you can't replace it with something on Spotify. It can only be tangibly experienced, and as media becomes more pervasive, we've talked about this, we're feeling more and more isolated than ever. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if there's something our churches can do that can serve a need that is now more prevalent than ever, and instead, we're like, what if the music was louder? (laughs) What if we had more haze? What if I was even more controversial? in my messages from the stage. <laughs> you know, Bray, we talk about this a lot using social, and you've hit on it, seizing the 167 hours outside of your Sunday service. And with social media, you know, you can use, you can, th- there's all kinds of ways that you can do that. Meet your community where they're at on Tuesday evening and bring them an opportunity to engage in spiritual practice, to pray for their spouse, what have you. We've talked about it at length because what churches historically have done with social is either point back to their last Sunday service or point ahead to their next one, right? They'll spend all six well, days okay, in between. to be fair, midweek. <laughs> right, yeah, they'll have one post about Wednesday prayer. Uh, but they'll spend all six days in between those Sundays just pointing at, at mm. you know, those bookends and say, hey, wasn't last week so great? I'll see you again next week. But when we think about our buildings, it's like, well, that's what our buildings are for. That's where we meet. That's This is where we do the Sunday services. This is where we do the Wednesday night prayers. What else can we use those buildings for? How can we use these buildings to serve people on Tuesday evening with something that's not a church service, right? And and that hasn't been a question that we've been asking. And thank God for churches like Century Church, and we're going to talk about your church in a bit, Central Church, um, who are starting to ask, not only ask this question, but provide an answer and and try something that's really outside of the box, that's really innovative to engage our community um, with our church buildings before they ever come to a Sunday service. Maybe they'll never come to a Sunday service mm. and maybe that's going to be okay. Wow. Um, but this is something new that we're trying with these buildings, like you said, that are mostly ghost towns for this week. We have these giant facilities that aren't being used for anything other than church services. What if we use them for something more? What a novel concept. (laughs) So Century Church, what they did was really cool. They didn't say, okay, we can solve this ourselves. 
what they did was they gathered more than 20 different designers, mm -hmm. architects, city planners, and they sat all down together. It's like, okay, we need to craft a plan. What does our community need? Yeah. And how can we as a church serve that need? And, and how can we do it as a church of like 500 people? Right. We're not a mega church. Sure. How can we do it in a way that's realistic mm -hmm. and sustainable and isn't going to bankrupt us? You know, we've all seen, maybe not because millennials don't buy homes, but <laughs> I had a, friend, a pair of friends and they bought this house. It was probably more than they should have bought. And then they become what we call house poor. It's like mm -hmm. they had this house and it's like they couldn't do anything else ever right. because all of it was going to that. And we've mm -hmm. seen that with church budgets. Yeah. You get this building and the vast majority of your budget goes to pay for the building. Mm -hmm. And that's tough. So what we don't want to do is put ourselves in a situation like that as well. What's great about this solution that we're going to talk about is that it solves theological issues, yeah. but pragmatically, it solves financial issues yeah. that churches are facing. Two people are giving less to uh, two birds, one stone. Yes. So the cool thing about these four basic principles is that they can apply to any church whether it's a big church, small church, whether it's an existing church, you already have a space, you can begin doing these things. Yeah, you things don't have right to away. be building a, right. a, a space from scratch to be able to implement these. You can implement these yeah. strategies into what you're doing right now. That's the idea. So principle number one, community first, church second. Basically flip the model on its head. Mm -hmm. Let's do the inverse of what we're doing right now. And the most important principle is to look for ways to address community needs before focusing on the needs of the congregation within a Christian context. And again, this is theological too. Yep. It's pragmatic, it's financially, fiscally responsible. Pastor Quinn says he believes that this approach will bring people to the campus who are not looking for Jesus, but who might later realize that Jesus is looking for them. Mm. I just got saved. I know that's a pastor <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. Woo! Yeah. let's go. Yeah. Doctor, pastor, a community theater is a uh, part of this church campus building. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna see some uh, images on the screen so you can actually like get a picture of what sure. this is going to look like. There's this big open space that they bought. There's going to be a preschool there. They've got a culinary incubator. I don't know what that is, but I want to check it out. I want to be incubated. There's a play <laughs> field. There's a fun place to hang out. The biggest idea, the kind of heart of the whole campus is something that they're going to call the well. And mm -hmm. this is in Alabama. It's this big green space. So imagine like a big soccer pitch, but like with no goalposts, although I think there is a soccer pitch of course, in the campus. With goalposts. Yeah. Different spot. <laughs> and it's this big green space. It's surrounded by a couple of buildings, and it's mm -hmm. meant to be the heart of the campus. You know, it's, 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 it's like a place that you can just sit, listen to music. Yeah. You can sit and eat. There's a place for like, kids to run around mm -hmm. and enjoy the outdoors. And this is also the first thing that they're going to build. And that's one of the principles here that we'll get to. Yeah. It's that they're not going to build everything all at once which is really cool. They're going to build the parts first and then they're going to expand as needed. Right. So principle number one, community first, church second. We know what our church needs. It's you know, a place to sit and do the normal auditorium sanctuary mm -hmm. thing. But what, do we, what does our community need? Well, they need a theater. They need daycare. They need kids that kids care throughout yeah. the week. Principle number two, partnerships that matter. Historically, many churches have used the bulk of their facilities, like we said, once or twice during a typical week at Century, the goal is to maximize the use of all the buildings throughout the week for two reasons. Number one, it brings more people to the campus, which adds more life and vibrance. And mm -hmm. we talked about that feeling where I would look forward to Friday youth so much because all my friends were in this church building and it meant so much to me. Yeah. And then I'd be like, we need to spend more time at the church. And then I'd go on a Thursday afternoon and my pastor's there like doing literally almost nothing. It's like praying. just general pastor things. Yeah. I'm like, this is less exciting. Yeah. There's no one here. <laughs> right. One of the solutions here is like you bring people in all the time, mm -hmm. there's always people there. Yeah, feels vibrant, feels great. It's like if you go to, if you look at two restaurants, you know, there's one that has nobody in it, and there's one that's like packed. You're like, oh, the one that's packed must, must be, be good. good. Yeah, must be something there worth checking out. And then the second thing it does is it helps offset the cost offset. of constructing and maintaining the buildings if others are paying to use the buildings on a regular basis. Yeah, I love this. This is the financial solution. Mm -hmm. It's important to find additional revenue streams to find ways to sustain the church. Yeah. Because if people are giving less, because people are attending less, and on average, people are not as Christian as they used to be mm -hmm. because people are being exposed for the, they were never really Christian to begin with, it was just yeah. a cultural thing. What are we gonna do if there are fundamental shifts in our amount of expected and anticipated budget? Mm -hmm. Gotta find additional revenue streams. Using your facilities is sure. one of the chief ways that, that you can do that. culinary incubator. I could pay to if, be, I. I guess how if this your is church work doesn't is, have a culinary incubator, will, what are you doing? I will pay to be incubated whilst being treated with culinary delights. I think that's what they're going for. I'm going to pay for it. You know, when these episodes were ten minutes or less, we couldn't do this. <laughs> what have we done? <laughs>
Principle number three, <laughs> incremental design. We talked about doing this bit by bit. Mm -hmm. In the architectural designs, in the kind of sketch drawings, there are different phases, but there are also different options. Yeah. So you can start fast with just building that well, what they call the well, that mm -hmm. green space with the surrounding buildings, but they also have these alternative options. So if after a couple of years of building something, they realize, oh, you know what? We need a bigger space for the dog park, which right. is an actual thing. Mm -hmm. They have a space where they can move it so that it's more dog park right. room. And so this allows them to actually gauge what's happening and make adjustments. Now, we do this with it's software. Like, it's like modular almost. Exactly. Yeah. Like, we launched Rebel Give, our new giving software, and then we didn't plan to have manual gift entry. So you could like manually put in if someone gives by cash mm -hmm. or check. And then like every user was like, no, you need to do this. And we were like, huh. We didn't know, <laughs> uh, but now we have users, so yeah. we should build that. Mm -hmm. And then we did. You don't usually have that possibility. With a building. It, well, we built our giant space. It's yeah, built. It's like, this is it. Oh, uh, well, why didn't you put in this? We're like, oh. I mean, that's a good thought, but. Uh, you don't know until you get yeah. everyone there. These walls are all here now. Once, right? Like, there's this old architectural story that I think is a fake story that okay. I heard on How I Met Your Mother from Ted Mosby, <laughs> who's a fake architect. <laughs> And he says, there's this guy that built this library and it was this most beautiful library, mm -hmm. but he didn't account for the weight of the books. Okay. And then they all got put in and it sunk and it like fell apart because he didn't account for once it was actually being used. Right. Now that feels like a mistake you shouldn't make. It's probably a fake story from a fake show with <laughs> fake architects. But the point is, there are things that you can't account for until sure. people are actually there. And so they have some alternative phases. Mm -hmm. That word used is great. Modular, where they can adjust based on how people are using the space. Well, and if you're building the space for the needs, to fit the needs of your community, you know, you start with the well and you add this piece over here, this piece over here, and then you realize, well, we had planned to do this, but actually our community, the ones that we're here for, are actually telling us that they want this right. or they need this. So you can actually serve your community better. You build this dog park, psych, no one has dogs. Right. Now that sounds like a dystopian universe that we don't want to be a part of. But it's like, let's say maybe in Pike Road, maybe there are cat, cat people. people. Who knows? Oh, dystopian indeed. <laughs> I mean, I have two cats, so I can say that. Because yeah, they're the worst. It's true. Every day I have to <laughs> vacuum this couch. It has so much cat hair because they don't move. I had to show, like, Brittany had to show me how to use it yesterday. And she's like, this is the attachment that you need. I was like, I was using the wrong attachment. She's like, no wonder. Makes sense. I have no practical skills. And well, cats are If aren't I great. was trying to build this church... <laughs> Leave it to Century Church. Uh, yeah, there are 20 designers. Principle number four, sense of adventure and creativity. Two mm -hmm. concepts that few people associate with churches today. Mm. We did an episode last week on the Notre Dame Cathedral. Yep. That used to be a thing. Yes. This is trying to bring back that adventure and creative feel when you're in a space. There's a reason people go to Starbucks and cafes to work. Yeah. Because it inspires creativity. It's been a carefully curated space. That's what we did with our Pro Church Tools yeah. offices. Feels... Nice to be here. Yeah. Natural light. Exposed beams. There you go. Feels good to work here. Inspiring creativity. Common ingredients for successful churches in centuries past, pun intended, but not now. So the community theater can also be used as a worship space. Mm -hmm. The preschool can also be used as a kid's ministry. Yeah. So now you've got multi-purpose spaces that work for the church, but are also serving the needs of the community. So and good. people enjoy being there mm -hmm. because it's trying to replicate that feeling of that third place. There's so many books that talk about this third place. You've got your work, you've got your home. What's that third place that you love spending mm -hmm. time in? A lot of people have a favorite cafe. And yeah, this imagine, is to imagine if the people in your community, their answer was, oh, the church or, you know, Century, this community spot that we have. That's yeah. my spot. That's where I like to hang. That's where I like to spend my free time. That's where I don't go out of obligation. This is where I go because I want to be there. Yeah, and that's an actual realistic possibility. Mm -hmm. We can actually do these things. And it's not just Century. My church, Central, is doing this right now. So the thing is, you can only do this if your church is a single word that starts with a C, <laughs> right? right? Like if, you yeah. don't, if your church yeah. name isn't one word that starts with C-E-N-T, you're in trouble. <laughs> but if it is... You're in luck. You're in a good space. Yeah. So we're building this new church building. Ours we've had for... Joe, how many years have we had our building? many a decades a million like it might be like a hundred years or something yeah. the church is really it's been around for a long time growing church we're about two thousand people so we're building this new space and so i texted my pastor this morning and i was like did you read this article he's like of course and i he's said like, i wrote that article what, <laughs> 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 what are we trying to do with our space and he said and i quote oh man so we want it to be a place where every day it serves our community through 
after school programs for kids, teen drop in, a restaurant where you can always have someone to eat with, birthday parties, play structure, splash pad for our community, sports programs happening every single week, trade shows, weddings. We're building a wedding chapel, a chapel in the back, table tennis for immigrants and cricket. We have this huge international base for schooling and college mm-hmm. in our region, and they don't really like hockey right. because hockey, eh, it's fine. And if you're not from Canada, you don't think it's even fine. Right. And so we have to find ways to meet those individuals Mm -hmm. where they're at and meet their needs. Concerts, we've got a partnership with Niagara College, with a film school, affordable housing is in the future as well, which is also a part of the Century um, bill that we didn't mention, but affordable housing is there. They're doing like foster care housing Mm -hmm. as as an option in the Century place. It's like as a constant reminder on the church campus, these people need us. Yeah. And they're right here, mm-hmm. and we're serving them. But also, as a reminder, you're coming to this church, you're coming to this place. Like we, you can serve them as well. Yeah. And it's a constant reminder because you're seeing it. Justin says we're literally exploring every single way we can serve Niagara on the lake. They don't have a community center in this area and want one, so we plan on doing that. And a mm-hmm. large part of it will be through serving children. Yeah. So I really do think that this is the future for churches. It's going to be something I think churches explore because they're going to they're need have to, to explore yeah, it yeah, out of necessity. Exactly, yeah. which is great. Because if we can do it purposefully, I think there's a win, win, win solution mm-hmm. here. To quote Michael Scott, you've got the financial, fiscal responsibility sure. solution. It's a theologically smart solution. Mm-hmm. And it's also uh, just practical for what you're trying to do. It's a pragmatic solution when it comes to meeting your community where you are and also being good stewards of what you have. Yeah, I mean, you when you're just reading that text from from your pastor about all the things that your church wants to do, and it's very similar to what Century Church is doing, if you were to read that out to somebody and say, what does this sound like? They'll say, oh, that sounds like a community center. And if you were to ask them, hey, does this sound like a church? They would say, well, no, that doesn't sound like what a church is is to me. And maybe that would raise some red flags for somebody. Well, you know, is this really what a church is supposed to be? But there's something that I read on Century Church's website where they 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 have this plan. They say, this is what we're going to do, and this is why we're doing it. And in the why, they said, you know, Jesus modeled this sacrificial, self-giving, um, selfless kind of life and kind of love. And 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 they said on the website, they're like, that's what we want this to be. We want our building to not be for us first, mm. to be for others first. And sure, we'll use it. We'll meet there on Sundays and Wednesdays and whatever. But we want this building to serve other people first, just like Jesus did. It's like, man, if our buildings could even personify, if the walls of our buildings, the purpose of our rooms, if they could personify the life and the love of Jesus, I think we're really onto something. The name of my church is Central Community Church. That's the full mm-hmm. full name. And we all we just refer to it as Central. But I think that there are so many churches with that word community in it because theologically, we know it's important mm-hmm. to be serving, outward focused. But in our practice, in our budget, mm-hmm. in our everyday ministry, if we were honest with ourselves, that name doesn't reflect what we're actually doing. And yeah. I think we took a long, hard look at ourselves inwardly at Central and we were like, you know, it's one thing to say we're for the community. It's another to actually like put our dollar mm-hmm. where our mouth is mm-hmm. and fully live that out. And I think that's what Century is doing. It's what we're aiming to do at Central. And I think that the more churches that follow suit with this, the better we're going to be. Because frankly, we have a branding problem as yeah. churches. We build these giant facilities nowhere near where people live. Mm-hmm. And then we say, come to us. Yeah. And then people have questions and we say, we'll help you when you come to us. Yeah. So yeah, 1030 on service yeah. times because that's when you can get help from us. And we're seen as this group that's like, not the way we want to be seen. We're talking about like, we're just like, we're outsiders. We're outcasts. Right. Like, yeah, but they don't want, like, they're, they're sending us away because like, you care only about yourselves. Mm-hmm. Your institutions are inwardly focused. You're not making a tangible difference. If you left this community, we wouldn't really notice a difference. That's a yeah. problem. Yeah. That's not okay. Yeah. And these solutions, they're actual solutions with literal physical buildings Mm -hmm. that are saying, this is what we believe, and so this is what we're actually going to do. It's one thing to preach from stage and be like, we care about this community. Like That's easy. Sure, We can all do that. Just like it's easy for us to do this episode, it's a lot harder for Pastor Quinn, Pastor Bill, and Pastor Justin at my church to actually say, okay, uh, this is going to be really hard, and it might be really difficult, and people might think we're stupid, Mm -hmm. but we're going to go for it anyway. Yeah. Great thoughts. We will link. I really can't say great thoughts at the end of my own statement. Great thoughts uh, to Alex. everyone. Great thoughts to Pastor Quinn yes. and to my church. That is not me that's doing this. It is my church leadership. Great thoughts. We're going to have links to the article from the Congress for New Urbanism written by Nathan Norris. You can mm-hmm. see the architectural drawings. 
If you're on the podcast, make sure to click on that in the show notes. And we'll also have a link to Century Church's announcement on what their vision is. Yeah. You were quoting from that mm-hmm. page. So make sure to read through, uh, read through those additional resources. And that'll do it for this episode of Pro Church Tools. We'll see you next time. 50,000! We did it! We did it! But we want more! Subscribe! (laughs) And always more likes. We need more likes. At least 50,000. All right. Yeah.